This is Where We Live from Connecticut Public Radio. I'm Lucy Nalpathanchel. The arts help us communicate. They help us understand the world around us. For the last 30 years, the Judy Dwaran Performance Project has used the arts as a tool to encourage social change. It's done so through innovative dance, powerful spoken word, and moving songs. And along the way, its audiences have also experienced new perspectives on issues like incarceration and immigration. Next month at Hartford Stage, the Judy Dwaran Performance Project will highlight many of its pieces over the last three decades in a 90-minute compilation called She Speaks Her Piece. We're going to learn more about that coming up. And there's going to be more information at our website, wmpr.org slash where we live, about that special performance. Now, Judy Dwaran and some of the founding members of her ensemble will be with me this hour to talk about their work. Have you seen one of their performances? You can join us, too, 888 that's 888-720-WMPR. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter at Where We Live. It's my pleasure to welcome Judy Dwaran back to our show. Hi, Judy. Hi. I want to mention that you're executive director and artistic director of the Judy Dwaran Performance Project, also Professor Emerita in the Department of Theater and Dance at Trinity College in Hartford. Uh, I was uh, speaking to my producers earlier about the first time I actually spoke with you was in 2016 when right. uh, you and your team were working on the performance Brave in a New World, mm-hmm. uh, which focused on reentry and its challenges and also the impact of on children of the incarcerated. Mm-hmm. Uh, for those of our listeners who may not be familiar with your performance project. Tell us uh, what you do. Well, the performance project was really founded. Um, the idea that that performance, movement, dance, and performance, and the other arts can really create change in the world. And so we um, there are three components of the, un- of the organization. There's an ensemble, which is a professional ensemble, and we've been performing for 30 years now, and um, Moving Matters, which is a, a program, that an educational residency program in schools, and l- largely Hartford schools, Hartford-based schools. And then we have Bridging Boundaries, which reaches out to populations that are affected by incarceration, both in prison and out of prison, and kids who have parents in prison. Mm. I'm going to be learning more about your work, uh, but I was, as I was telling you before the show, I actually don't know a lot about you as a person, <laughs> uh, Judy. Uh, tell us about uh, your upbringing. Have you always been a dancer? I started dancing when I was very young. Um, m- my mom had the g- good insight to um, to send me to modern dance with Trudy Cashman, who's kind of the mother of modern dance in Hartford, and I studied with her. And throughout my whole growing up um, and went to camp for the arts, and it really was a very strong direction for me. Um, when I went to college, I went to Smith because they had a dance program. At that time, there were not many colleges that had dance programs. And then in my senior year, I heard that Clive Thompson from the Ailey Company was coming to Trinity uh, to start a dance program there. And I went there for my senior year and ended up graduating from there. And then a year later, I became um, the person that kind of kept that whole dance program going at Trinity. And and that became my trajectory for a long time, um, working to build dance there. And then alongside of that, I began the nonprofit, the Judy Dorn Performance Project. Once there was a dance major and I felt things were were moving along at Trinity, I, I, I put that, started the project at the same time. Mm. Yeah. You were born and raised in Connecticut. Why did you decide to stay? Um, I don't think I intended to stay, but I think when I was invited to teach at Trinity and I really saw that the direction that that could go, um, that kind of became where I did, that became home base. And I've been very happy that I made that choice. Um, It's been an incredible journey in so many ways. So take us back uh, 30 years. Again, uh, Judy Dwaran Performance Project celebrating 30 years of uh, moving performances in our region. You mentioned wanting to uh, you know, work on these specific issues, um, thinking about social change. So tell us about the early days. How did you begin? Um, you know, it, in the very early days when we first started, I mean, I knew that I wanted to create a company and it was very hard at that time and, and still really is to um, be an independent choreographer and to be able to get funding and grants. So we really needed to um, start a nonprofit. And at the time, I was also connected to a number of artists in New York. And at first, um, the the project was an, uh, um, an umbrella for independent artists who were looking to be part of a nonprofit, both here and in New York. And after about a year or two, 
um, the New York people were beginning to either leave New York or go. So it became clear that it really needed to base here and that the company became the the origin point for it all. So um, we began to, so that's really where it, 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 it founded itself. And we began to make pieces. Lisa, Kathy were the two of the um, very first members. And, um, and our first touring went to, to the National Theater of Bulgaria. So mm -hmm. we were kind of, it was um, a wonderful start. It was, um, and gradually we opened up to working in schools. And then um, 15 years ago, we started working in the prisons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so you mentioned you became a, a nonprofit. So it wasn't always the the Judy Dorn Performance Project. It had a different name. It had a, Meta Arts was the name, and then um, a little ways in, once it became clear that we were the 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 key organization, the the core organization of the uh, um, there, then we changed the name to Judy Dorn Performance Project. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, when you are on stage and when you're working with other artists, what are you hoping to convey and how did you wrap that into the mission of the Judy Dorn Performance Project? Um, well, uh, I'm looking to, first of all, create a collaborative process with the artists that I work with so that I'm not there to bring in movement and say, please do this and do it as closely as I did it. Um, I'm really, um, I bring in ideas. I bring in different catalysts for exploration. And improvisation is really the root of how we create pieces together. And so it was really developing a group of people that are interested in working in that way because some people really like to be told what to do. And, 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 and I was interested in something different. And... Um, and then the piece develops. I'm the outside eye watching these improvisations and, and beginning to see what works, how, it, uh, how to shape it, and how to carry whatever the vision is forward. The idea really being that um, I think the arts are an incredible voice for change and can be not in a hit over the head didactic way, but in a way of reaching people at a visceral level, um, at a human level, and through movement, which is so basic to who we are as human beings um, as the source, but also incorporating other arts to bring people to um, new perspectives, to help them feel what they might read about or hear about, but feel it in their own experience, in their own being, and perhaps then begin to think about it and to perhaps do things in a different way as a result. Mm. When we think about some artists, their uh, main mission is to entertain, but you feel like you have a deeper purpose. Yeah, I think it's, um, it's asking an audience to dive into some dark material, but to do so with a sense of hope, um, with a sense of humor, um, and also with a, a, a sense of an aesthetic and, and beauty so that you can talk about something that is really pretty awful, but you can do so and shape it in a way that's both beautiful and um, and shocking, mm -hmm. and, and then help to move that feeling to something that um, indicates a sense of hope and a sense of change and a sense of purpose. My guest today is Judy Dwarren. She's the executive director and artistic director of the Judy Dwarren Performance Project. This year, uh, the ensemble is celebrating 30 years of uh, performing around the region. Uh, Judy's also a professor emerita in the Department of Theater and Dance at Trinity College in Hartford. Um, have you seen one of uh, the pieces by the Judy Dwarren Performance Project? You can join us, 888-720-9677, or find us on Facebook and Twitter at Where We Live. Uh, coming up, we're going to hear from uh, some of the founding members of the ensemble, uh, Kathy Bortek Gersten and Lisa Matthias. Uh, but I wanted to ask you about some of those early pieces. I understand Lighthouse was, was one of the first. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Okay. Um, Lighthouse was a piece that, that started, um, actually it was inspired by my, the, the death of my dad. And um, I think I was pondering for a long time the idea of how does one still remain connected or can one still remain connected to someone that was very, very important in your life when they're no longer here. And, um, and I think my dad was someone who provided lights in the dark, and I felt like the theme of lighthouses as doing that um, um, was the way to approach um, this work. And so we did, we went, we explored, it, it had two incarnations professionally. One was in Hartford, and then we were invited to Baltimore Theater Project to do it as a, a we had a residency there. And um, in both cases, the audience sat on the stage, and we used the house as um, the performance space, and then a little bit of the stage section as well. And it was, it was very, 
It was a very moving piece, and I think it it was by turning it around, it turned a lot of things around and allowed mm -hmm. people to look at what we were doing in a very different way, and um, and so. It, it, it was a successful tour and a success, successful life. When we did it again, we, we, we re revised it in 2015. We did not turn the audience around <laughs> this time. And it, it, was, it was a strong piece again. Um, yeah. What makes a, a piece successful? How does the audience respond to you and the other uh, artists? Well, one of the things that is a tradition is that we have talkbacks with the audience afterwards. And we know that um, a piece is successful when a lot of people stay, and they stay for a long time. Um, sometimes um, the talkbacks are longer than the performance itself, mm -hmm. and so um, that helps us to know. Um, also, you can just feel from an audience's response, they applaud a lot and stand up, then you know that, that they've been moved in, in a clear way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned uh, earlier that uh, you also uh, went and performed abroad. You were in Bulgaria. Why yes. Bulgaria? You know, we were invited by, um, there was a, a particular, you know, suitcase fund, and we were invited through that and through someone we knew who was Bulgarian that just said, um, and and also from the theater, uh, Baltimore Theater Project. So it was a kind of combination of people that invited us, and um, it happened to be at a time when they had just had their first democratic election. It was democracy had just arrived in, in Bulgaria, and so it was an incredible moment when we arrived there. Um, people were just so excited because we somehow symbolized um, democracy and this newfound freedom that they felt that they were going to explore. And, and so, um, so it was, a, it was a very powerful moment to be there. And when you returned, uh, if I'm understanding this correctly, the piece that you worked on became Reigns? It, well, actually, the piece that we performed in Bulgaria was Distant Voices Coming Near. And um, in the performance coming up, Kathy will perform a solo that originated there. But when one of our translators in Bulgaria was um, a person named Krasi Boykovska, and she told us this story about Chernobyl and mm -hmm. about the rains coming down and um, and really endangering the health of, of the people there. And so when we went back, um, my husband and I went back, I was invited to go back there to teach, and we taped um, uh, Crossy telling her story, and that became the basis for the, the piece Reigns. Mm. Yeah. And I bring up Reigns because that's part of this 90-minute uh, compilation, uh, She Speaks Her Piece, which mm -hmm. we'll hear about later. Uh, but for our listeners, uh, tell us a little about a bit about her story and how you incorporated that in Reigns. Okay. Well, Crossy's story was that, you know, the, the, the rains came from Chernobyl and they rained all over mm -hmm. um, Eastern Europe. And Everybody, there was a festival, and you know, all the people were, um, and the government never told the people that these rains have possibly carried radioactive material. And so um, there was a parade, and all the people marched in the parade, and the people in the government who knew that this was not um, safe had umbrellas and um, watched from the parade from the safety of um, where they stood with umbrellas or whatever, and her children mm -hmm. and all the other people were in the rain and eating fruits and vegetables and um, not having any idea that, in fact, all these things could be poison. And so it was an incredible story when she told it. it she taped, when we taped it, it was that powerful story that we could bring back. And we used umbrellas as the sort of main visual element in the piece. I'm always interested in using visual elements and changing the way they're used um, as a way to make the statement more powerful and more layered. And so, um, so that's how the piece is set up. Yeah. Judy Dorn is my guest today here on Where We Live. I'm Lucy Nalpathanchel. Uh, coming up, we're going to hear from other professional artists who've worked with Judy Dorn over the last 30 years. Have you seen this ensemble on stage? You can join us too, 888-720-9677. Or find us on Facebook and Twitter at Where We Live.
This is where we live from Connecticut Public Radio. I'm Lucy Nalbathanchel. The Judy Dwarm Performance Project has been moving audiences for 30 years. A primary focus of the arts nonprofit is to serve underserved populations. Judy Dwarm's with me in studio. She's executive and artistic director of the Judy Dwarm Performance Project, also Professor Emerita in the Department of Theater and Dance at Trinity College in Hartford. I mentioned that one of your focuses is uh, serving the underserved. So when you when we hear that term, who do you mean? I mean anybody that doesn't have a voice that co- hasn't found their avenue to have their um, their needs and their issues heard. So it's taking those stories that are underneath that we don't hear about and bringing them forward um, and saying we must hear about these stories. These are um, part of our really wonderful culture and our pe- people and we need to bring that forward. Yeah. Well, we're going to be hearing about um, some of the the work that you've done, including um, helping people who've uh, been incarcerated as well as people impacted by that, their families, uh, in just a few minutes. But when we talked about you forming this ensemble, Judy, um, tell us more about um, the founding members before we hear from one of them. <laughs> and who are the people that you felt drawn to that you wanted to work with? Mm-hmm. Well, um, Kathy, who's sitting right next to me, <laughs> um, was a person that I had met in the dance community of Hartford, and um, it felt like there was just a shared sense, a, a shared understanding of improvisation, which is kind of key to, to as I described earlier, the way that we work. And um, so she had been in Lighthouse, which preceded the, the formal um, establishment of the of the. Um, organization, and we definitely knew that we wanted to keep working together, and so there wasn't, we were already working in synchrony from the very beginning, Mm -hmm. and Lisa, um, Lisa Matthias was was a student of mine at Trinity, and um, she had come from a very different dance background, and, um, and and we we merged and and shared and grew and grew together because I always love to learn from my students as and always do um, as well and and so Lisa and I um, Lisa did her performance of her senior project as a dance and um, I um, made a piece with with her for that and um, just in general Lisa began to open up and really understand improvisation in a really clear and wonderful way mm-hmm. so. Also, um, you know, I never worked with students when they were students. I really felt that there needed to be that 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 distance and change. And this, but when the company was established, I invited her as well. And there were two male persons. So um, Orion Duckstein, who um, no, actually it was Tim Martin originally, yeah. and um, and Ajamu Ayunde, um, and he uh, Ajamu had been a Trinity student, also graduated. And um, actually, Tim, um, they were all people that I had known in one way or another as when they were students. And then um, they came on board at that point mm-hmm. and um, didn't stay as long. <laughs> Kathy and Lisa stayed the whole, the whole. And then, um, yeah. And so yeah. then it, but it still remained um, two women and two men for quite some time. Um, one, when um was it Tim left? Then, then Orion yeah. Duckstein came in. So let's let me uh, turn to Kathy Bortek Gersten, who's sitting next to Judy Dwarren. Uh, Kathy is associate artistic director for the Judy Dwarren Performance Project, one of the founding members of the ensemble. Uh, welcome to our show, Kathy. Mm-hmm. Nice to be here. So tell me, what was the dance community like thirty years ago, and and what were, what made you uh, feel like you could work with Judy? I came to Hartford from having been in New York and Florida dancing. And came to Trinity and was taking some classes. And through some of the faculty there, um, I was introduced to Judy. And Judy started creating an organization by pulling all dancers together. I didn't know other dancers in the area. And so we would have these meetings at Trinity. And the organization ended up becoming Dance Services Network, a way of bringing all the dancers together to see what others were doing in ways that we could work together to create a stronger force since dancers tend to work off on their own. And through that, we started working together. We had a great lunch at AC Peterson's, I remember, <laughs> 100 years ago, talking about where, where, what we could do and where we could go. And a lot of our backgrounds, even though I didn't grow up in Connecticut, there were a lot of um, similarities. And so it was um, just a match that worked. Mm-hmm. 
It worked for your, for you and your ensemble, but I'm wondering, was it challenging to uh, want to start this up uh, so close to New York City? Because everybody wants to work in New York. Uh, why did you want to stay here in Connecticut? I had just started a family, and um, living in Connecticut was great. It's close enough to New York if you want it. It's close enough to Boston if you want it. But the quality of life that I could have for my family, for myself, and do my art was like um, an unbelievable blessing. Mm. Uh, Judy, uh, what was it like to try to find support for your nonprofit? I mean, these days we hear so much about uh, funding for the arts uh, being cut and on the decline. It's uh, hard to uh, keep uh, many uh, organizations going. So how did you do it? Um, we wrote a lot of grants <laughs> and uh, learned how to do, how to write grants and, and to do it and to be very to be smart about it um, and to try to g create a, a group of individuals who would also be interested in supporting the organization. I think our strongest support has been through grants mm -hmm. throughout the years and um, and I. Um, yeah, for a long time I was a grant writer, and now I don't have to be. I have a wonderful person, where <laughs> Jennifer Ivory, who works in our office, that is doing a, a fabulous job. But I think that um, it's been wonderful the way that we have been supported, but I think one has to really be persistent. I mean, this is not easy business, and so you have to really um, keep going and not get discouraged and, um, and just keep believing. You know, one really important thing, I'd, the way – the growth of the company and the ensemble and the project has grown is that we have followed the direction it needed to go. There was never this, this is what we're going to do and this is how we're going to do it and you're going to like it. That we really have this ability and Judy has this vision and ability to listen and see. And so our next steps by when we step into them, they're already there ready to happen. So we mentioned the ensemble, but tell us uh, uh, again, Kathy, a little bit more about some of the programs under the Judy Dwarren Performance Project, uh, working with schools, working with the uh, formerly incarcerated or those who are incarcerated. I mean, how did you, I guess, make those inroads? As I said, you know, when things start to one place, we started with a fifth grade class at Parkville Elementary School. They were doing a study on um, migration and oppression. And Judy and I went into this class and did a session with the fifth graders. And now we're going into our 25th year at Parkville under the Moving Matters Residency Project. And the entire school is involved. And again, it's not we're not telling them what to do. We're coming with an idea. It's always tied to their language arts curriculum so that there's a book involved that everybody reads. And then it's discussing what's the essence, what's the importance of what you're reading and what you're hearing and how we all bring our own histories, no matter how young we are, to our experiences and our thoughts. And then how do you make a movement story out of that? How do you take that idea and use it? Because our body is the first place that we, we learn to express ourselves. And so how do we get back to that and understand that? And so we have close to four or 500 kids that come together on one day at the end of the semester in May and all have their movement stories put together in this incredibly beautiful script. Mm. What's that like to see children respond uh, to uh, you know, not only what you're saying, but thinking about how they can express themselves to tell these stories, Kathy? It's incredible. I mean, it's really, I, every year, it's new. It's like it's new and exciting because we don't repeat stories. Sometimes I think, wouldn't that be nice? But every year there's something new and there's a new idea. And watching children really think about how they feel and that here they have an opportunity to find their voice and use their voice, whether it's a boys flipping down the hallway or um, having to work together with somebody that they decide that they haven't liked. That's not an option. Because we go into the classroom, everybody's involved, and it's about the community and building community. We all want to be part of a community, and um, the movement really helps us interact and listen and respond to one another in positive ways. Uh, Judy, I thought that was interesting that uh, Kathy mentioned that one of the themes that you first worked on with these students at Parkville uh, focused on migration and mm -hmm. oppression. Uh, this is something that uh, is uh, occurring uh, today. Absolutely. And it's interesting that these themes keep popping up. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you, uh, when you work with these children, uh, hear similar um, 
um, stories from them or ways that they want to express themselves? I mean, how do you see that um, coming out in 2018, 2019? In terms of that particular theme, um, I think that we haven't focused on the migration scene with the kids again um, recently, but um, but I think that they, as Kathy was saying, have a chance to say whatever they feel about where they need, to, where they find home, where they find their own home within themselves, and where they find home in their community. So um, it's interesting that you mentioned because it it could be a really interesting topic to bring up again. It's a very it would probably be a difficult to- topic for for them right now. Um, we did bring that topic up in a dance piece. We we did a piece called U.S. last year that was about. Um, immigration and the issues of immigration, and that is something that we're performing. Some of that will be in the performance coming up. Yeah. Judy Dwarren is my guest today. She is a Judy Dwarren of Judy Dwarren Performance Project, Executive Director and Artistic Director of this nonprofit. Also with us, uh, Kathy Bortek Gersten, one of the founding members of the Judy Dwarren Performance Ensemble. As we learn about their work over the last 30 years, um, including uh, with uh, the incarcerated. And I wanted to bring into uh, our discussion now uh, Eli Bellman, who was a participant in several programs with the Judy Dwarren Performance Project including the Moms and Kids Residencies at York Correctional Institution and its New Beginnings Arts Workshop at Trinity College in collaboration with Community Partners in Action. I hope I got that all in there. Uh, Eli, welcome to the show. Hi. So tell us about when you uh, first met Judy Dwarren and the members of her ensemble. Oh, my goodness. It's, uh, it's been a long time now, but uh, the had to have been uh, close to 10 years ago now I, when I first started working with Judy and the uh, the volunteers and initially started working in their, their moms and kids program and then was lucky enough to be a part of their uh, performance project as well. So you were incarcerated at York at the time? Yes. So what, what was your response uh, to uh, this particular nonprofit coming into York and, and wanting uh, to hear your story and work with you? Were you, uh, you know, worried at first, or was it something that you welcomed? Um, I think it was a combination of both. You know, you're not 100% sure what you're getting yourself into sometimes, and you're not sure how, uh, how others are, are going to embrace you or feel about you or, you know, especially when you're coming from a, a situation of being incarcerated. So, you know, you, you have a lot of feelings that kind of go both ways on, on, on the situation when it comes to meeting new people. But one thing I can say is right from the very beginning, Kathy, Leslie, and all of the volunteers with Judy were absolutely wonderful and welcoming. And it was a program that just made you feel like you were supposed to be there. So describe the moms and kids residencies. What did you do? Uh, the Moms and Kids Residency was a was a great program that opened up doors for conversation, using the arts to give us an opportunity to kind of understand our kids better, understand their struggles, what they were going through, gave them a voice to kind of be able to talk to us about the, the situations they were going through, while also being around other kids who were going through the same things they were and us to be around, you know, other moms who were going through the same situations we were as far as trying to figure out how to best be a parent from a distance and still be a part of our children's lives. And the arts, you know, those, it, it always, like Kathy was saying earlier, you know, your bodies, whether it be movement, whether it be writing, is always the first way that we express ourselves, even when we can't necessarily put into words what we want to say or what's really going on inside our heads or our hearts. So how did you express yourself, Eli, um, through this program? Um, I, I t- I'd like to think that I took full advantage of uh, all of the uh, activities and programs that Judy gave us the opportunity to be a part of, whether it be, you know, drawing and telling stories and, and asking questions. You know, we had a lot of different activities, especially for the weekends. We'd create storybooks for the kids that, you know, kind of talked about different subjects, whether it be, you know, what, you know, making hard decisions was like, what it was like to miss somebody or to not have somebody that you want right there with you, be there with you. And those all opened up conversations for, for me and my son to be able to kind of talk about the things that, you know, maybe he wasn't necessarily comfortable talking about in another given situation. Mm. 
Uh, Judy, uh, we're hearing from Eli Bellman again, uh, someone who participated in the moms and kids residencies at York through the Judy Doran mm-hmm. Performance Project. Uh, when uh, you and uh, your colleagues go into uh, York Correctional, how do you facilitate those conversations? How do you get uh, people like Eli to trust you and to also uh, um, connect with them that they can express themselves in these ways using the arts? Mm-hmm. Well, I think that it's um, we we establish a circle that's a safe space and that allows people to to be able to express themselves and say whatever they need to say. The themes, whether it be in the performance residency, um, for instance, this year we're doing the theme "What Matters," and all everybody's writing about that theme. Um, in the moms and kids, we often have a theme that also the moms are brainstorming as to what they want to do um, for that, for their kids. Um, We also have connected with um, social worker at York, and so that, for instance, in the Moms and Kids program, there's a follow-up, and now it's a um, bi-monthly follow-up with the social worker with the moms, who whatever moms want to follow up, so that there's there's a sense, I mean, I think that, that the main thing is that, that the women understand that we see them as human beings, that we accept who they are at this moment, that we don't come in with a pre, um, predisposed a- attitude about who they are, or whatever has brought them there. We're starting from this moment when we meet everyone, and we start from a place of openness and, um, and trust. And, and I think that they feel that, and, and that begins the dialogue. Mm. Eli Bellman, how did that make you feel uh, to know that they were looking at you without judgment? Uh, That is the biggest piece. You know, you always have a little bit of doubt in the back of your mind. You might carry your own shame, your own guilt for the things that you're you're carrying coming into to a program, and to have immediately this this feeling of that's not what this is about. This is about our kids, about a safe place, about a place where we can all relate to each other and actually do the work that actually helps and and helps both us and the children to heal is it's amazing and they have always been absolutely non judgmental to say the least. Mm. Uh, Kathy, uh, I know that some of the pieces that the Judy Dwaran Performance Project uh, uh, has performed include Brave in a New World that talked about uh, reentry and the impact on not only the individual that was incarcerated, but the families. Uh, again, this is something that uh, you feel the, the project has been able to open up uh, a dialogue when people see these performances who may not have this experience? Absolutely. When we first did um, In My Shoes, which was our first large piece that um, the returning uh, women were part of, we uh, performed it at Hartford Stage and wondering, are we going to fill the space? And not only did we fill it, but we had close to 200 people that were on a wait list that we had to find another venue to perform it once again. So we want to know forever, um, people who have made mistakes and are paying the price for those mistakes have been put in places that we never see. We don't talk about. We only say that it's they're bad and need to be punished. And as Robin Cullen has said in one of her pieces, you know, one day she's a tax paying citizen and the next day she's incarcerated for having made a mistake. So any of us, um, life can change on a dime and we know that with our health, with whatever. And so it seems Everybody wants to know. We want to know how we can be better, how we can help others that need to be better, and what it is our responsibility for ourselves and for each other. Mm. Uh, Eli Bauman, uh, before we let you go, um, you are still involved with the Judy Doran Performance Project uh, after your release from York in 2018. What has it been like for you? How have people responded to you? You know, I, I have been blessed to be a part of Judy's programs and the New Beginnings program as well, because transitioning home after being away for any amount of time is difficult. And there's so many people coming out every day who don't have, you know, the means or the support systems in place to really help them figure out what it is to be home and how to to make that work. And programs like Judy's have an immense effect on people being able to transition home and to be able to do so successfully. Being part of the New Beginnings program, you know, gave me the opportunity to 
deal with Trinity students on campus, as well as people I had already known from my time being incarcerated, giving me a comfortable place to continue the work that I'd already begun. But it also gave me the opportunity to meet other people who I wouldn't have assumed had, you know, anything in common with me, but to see them also embrace me and see me as another one of themselves and not as, you know, just my crime or just the case, but to see me as another student, you know, and to back me and support me made gave me the opportunity to kind of believe that I was able and capable of doing the things that I wanted to do when I got home. And Eli, I understand you're you're, uh, in school. Tell us what you're studying. Uh, I'm currently enrolled uh, at Trinity, thanks to uh, the Judy program, as well as uh, all of the the great supports I've had, and I'm uh, studying biochemistry. Well, wonderful uh, to hear uh, about your new beginning. Eli Bellman, again, a participant in several programs with the Judy Dwaran Performance Project. Uh, Eli, thanks for calling in today. Thank you. This is Where We Live. I'm Lucy Nalpathanchel. In studio with me, Judy Dwaran, executive and artistic director of the Judy Dwaran Performance Project. Also, Kathy Bortek Gersten, who is a founding member of the Judy Dwaran Performance Ensemble. After the break, we're going to hear from another founding member and learn more about She Speaks Her Piece. This is a special compilation of Dwaran pieces over the last three decades that will be performed at Hartford Stage next month. You can join us, too. Find us on Facebook and Twitter at Where We Live. This is where we live from Connecticut Public Radio. I'm Lucy Nalpathanchel. Coming up tomorrow, Connecticut Public Radio will be broadcasting the impeachment hearings live starting at 9 a.m. on air and on WMPR.org. But we still plan an interesting Where We Live episode tomorrow morning. We're focusing on broadband internet access and how it impacts rural communities. Now, you can still hear the show at its regular time live at 9 a.m. on our Facebook page. Or you can download the podcast on your phone anytime. Just search for Where We Live on your favorite podcast podcast app. Hold on just a little while longer. Hold on just a little while longer. Hold on just a little while longer. Everything's gonna be all You're hearing uh, Hold On, which is part of a rehearsal for She Speaks Her Piece. Again, this uh, special performance by the Judy Dwaran Performance Project next month at Hartford Stage. We're going to tell you more about that in just a few minutes. Uh, in studio with me is Judy Dwaran, who started this nonprofit with the help of professional artists like Kathy Bortek Gersten 30 years ago. They're in studio with me to talk about that work over the last three decades. And joining us now is another founding member, Lisa Matthias. Uh, Lisa, welcome to our show. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, you are also a lead teaching artist in the Judy Dwaran Performance Project Residency uh, Program. Uh, before we learn more about uh, your uh, time with Judy, uh, I've been teasing she speaks her piece now uh, all hour. So uh, let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, I'll start with you, Judy. Um, tell us how you uh, were able to look at all of the work that you and, and the other professional artists have done uh, and, and come up with this compilation in 90 minutes. Uh, well, it wasn't easy, <laughs> and this is version 30 that we're on, <laughs> but it's, I think, the one we're going to go with. And then Kathy and I really um, programmed this together and w- really talked through and looked at so many pieces, and um, and it was the idea, actually, we we were starting to look at it, and Kathy said, let's throw out the chronology and let's just look at um, the themes and juxtapose it in that way. And that was a you know, really great way to do it because I think it al- allows us to see pieces that were made so many years ago and actually resonate even more strongly today and juxtaposing those with pieces that have been made this year or last year or two years ago and then seeing how we hope things would change but wow they really haven't and we have to get busy and I think that what we hope I hoped mm-hmm. that people will say after it all is we really have to get busy. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the pieces that uh, our listeners will see if they go to She Speaks Her Piece uh, on December 9th at Hartford Stage is this body of work, uh, 1993, called My Body, My Body. Lisa Matthias, uh, since you've joined us, tell us about that piece. 
Uh, that's a piece very close to my heart. Kathy and I were in the original uh, improvisational sessions in those bags for <laughs> sometimes hours at a time and experimenting. And uh, at that point, I was a, a young woman, newly married. Uh, then the piece continued, and I was then a mom. And those issues come up in the piece. And now several, many, many years later, to be back in the bag and realize that Nothing really has changed. We're still dealing with these issues and, and how relevant it is. Uh, it's important to still get that message out. And it's empowering to do the piece. It's uh, upsetting at, at, you know, when you think about the ramifications of the fact that we're still in this position, but it's an important piece for everyone to see. And there's humor in it, as you know, with most of Judy's work. She's, it's, there are many layers to how it's presented. So. Let's, let's hear a little bit of My Body, My Body. It's my body. What body? Who body? Nobody. It's my body. What body? Nobody. Who body? It's my body. Would somebody please my body? It's my body. Would somebody please my body? Booby here, booby there, boobies every everywhere. Body boo, body boo, bend the booby body. What? It's my shame. It's your shame. It's all the little girl shame. It's my shame. It's your shame. It's all the little girl shame. Ask permission. Ask permission. Ask permission. Ask permission if you please. Ask permission. Ask permission. Ask permission. So, Lisa, describe uh, what uh, people in the audience uh, see as uh, my body, my body is being performed. So there are three performers, and we are all in a large bag uh, with three holes, so only our heads are coming out of the holes. And uh, we travel onto the stage, and we have some uh, surprising interactions with each other. And as the piece proceeds, we each come out of that bigger bag into our own bags, and there's... Uh, as you hear this really rhythmic chant, which drives the piece. And we are doing several gestures and movements within the bags, but ultimately it comes to us shedding those bags and coming into our own and experiencing that and uh, taking ownership of that. Mm. Uh, we heard Lisa mention again, and this is something that Judy also mentioned earlier, some of these themes uh, keep coming back uh, uh, time and time again. Kathy, what was going on in 1993 when you guys were working on My Body, My Body? You know, the women's movement has always had sort of, in my experience, kind of these fits and starts um, coming forward and really finding voice. And we were at a time where it seemed really important to keep pushing forward, pushing forward on who we are as women, what it means to be a woman, um, and taking ownership of all that. And my body body was so much fun to work on. Um, the idea of being in a bag and being hidden and having all these m incredibly technical and difficult movements happening inside a bag that you really can't see all of it. You just see some of the um, repercussions of that movement. Um, but that's speaking to the fact of what women were going through, how who we are as as people and everything that, that stirs within us and how to bring that forward and the idea then of bursting out of the bag and shedding it and finding one's own voice and playing through it. And it's been amazing because we've done it at schools. We've done it at um, all different places. And students have taken the piece on. Um, um, it's been really interesting watching high school students perform that piece and sort of embrace themselves um, and, and their voice within it. Mm. Uh, we just have a few minutes left, but I wanted to talk about one of the pieces uh, that has been created uh, closer to now, and that's uh, I Have a Name. Uh, before we listen to this from the rehearsal, uh, Judy, could you tell us briefly about um, some of the themes that you hope, that you hope to bring out in I Have a Name? Yeah, the, it, I Have a Name is from this um, piece that we did um, last year called U.S., and it was um, we did it as a site-specific piece at the Harper Public Library, which is a hub for immigration in the city, and then we did it at the Academy um, a second time. And it's a piece that really asks us to look at immigration and what's going on in immigration in a new way. Let's hear it. I have a name. 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 I
Again, that's coming from the rehearsal of She Speaks Her Piece, which is a special performance by the Judy Dwaran Performance Project happening uh, next month. Uh, before we hear uh, the, the details of how listeners uh, can see this performance, I wanted to ask you, uh, Lisa, um, because you've worked with these women for a long time, uh, do you feel like uh, many artists feel like they have a responsibility to respond to these social issues? Absolutely. And Judy's work is a perfect opportunity for that. Um, you know, I really expanded in every way uh, when I met Judy. And uh, as a dancer, you never expect that you're going to end up actually working in a prison. But with all of the different programs that have come from Judy's vision and from her listening to the needs that are out there, um, there's just countless opportunities to show that art really is a healing force and so important. And uh, as we're performing these pieces, it, it is important and there is a responsibility. Uh, I remember the first time that we took a piece that we had done at the prison out and we had to think about how we were going to be sharing the stories of these women. Um, it was a daunting task and it really called upon us as performers to draw from our own humanity and our own experiences. So we may not have had the same stories or experienced the same things as those women, um, but we are also women and everyone has struggles. And so I think that we all bring our life experience to our performance so that it can be authentic. We're not pretending anything. We're trying to find uh, what's inside us that we can share that will then do the work justice. Uh, Kathy, how can our listeners uh, find out more about She Speaks Her Peace? Well, you can always look at the website, which is www.judydwarren.org, or you can go directly to jdpp SSHP, which stands for She Speaks Her Peace, dot, dot eventbrite.org. And we'll also link that on our website, wmpr.org slash where we live, uh, for our listeners might not be able to, to jot down uh, all of those letters. Uh, but before we go, Judy, again, uh, you and uh, Kathy and Lisa and so many others have been performing in our region for 30 years. Um, how do you feel uh, the dance community, do they have a, a place to expand? What can be done to help dancers uh, who want to do the work that you're doing? Um, well, I think having a space would be really helpful. There isn't a space for dance in Hartford. <clears throat> so dancers find spaces that I know in different parts of the city. And, and, and that's a nice, interesting challenge, I mean, because you can find uh, site-specific. You can do, it can push you to new directions in your work, but it shouldn't. But there is no home. And I think that that would, it's talked, been talked about for many years. But it's not there. I mean, I think there's been lots of efforts in the dance community to collaborate with each other and to network. And mm -hmm. um, we see the Connecticut Dance Alliance is the latest manifestation of that and a very successful one. But I think that um, there's got to be a way that, that dancers and the city and, and funders kind of maybe sit down and figure out, is there a way to, um, to create a, a home so that people, there's a go-to space um, that, that performance can happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, She Speaks Her Piece uh, will be performed at the Hartford stage December 9th. More information at our website, wmpr.org slash where we live. Judy, before we let you go, what's next for you? <laughs> um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait till this one. <laughs> but but there, I, I mean, I, I do have ideas of what's next. So there is a next. <laughs> so, it's well, not 30 years and we're done. <laughs> yeah. It's 30 years and we're ready to go. So we'll have to have you back. It's a pleasure uh, to speak with you and to see the work that you've done through the years uh, with your fabulous team. Judy Doran, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank also you. to Kathy Bortek-Gersten, Lisa Matthias. Uh, today's show produced by Lydia Brown. I'm Lucy Nalpathanchel. As always, thanks for listening.